Hi everybody, welcome back to another video. This video will be different from my usual earnings analysis video, but rather a guide video on the interest rate impacts on REITs. When it comes to investing in REITs, it is riskier than you think. In fact, REITs can be considered one of the most risky investments due to the nature of its operation. So in this video, we'll go through on the way REITs works and how interest rate impacts big and small REITs in different ways. REITs essentially allows you to own a share of the properties without having the need to have a huge sum of money. Moreover, unlike managing your own properties, you'll have a REIT manager to manage it. REITs are known for their dividends as they have to issue above 90% of their income as dividends. By giving a large portion of their income as dividend, they will also get tax exemption in the process. However, this also means that it's hard for them to accumulate cash for rainy days. Essentially, if they need cash, they will need to either issue shares to the market, which will dilute your shares in the process, or take on more debts. So because of the nature of operation of the REITs, the government have set a law where there must be a buffer zone where the REITs do not over leverage themselves. So there are two main requirements for all REITs. First, leverage ratio must be below 50% at all times. And second, the interest coverage ratio must be more than 2.0 times. I'll later elaborate on why these two factors are so important and how do they affect the REITs operation. So you might ask, what if they cross these standards? Well, they will not have be able to give dividends and get tax. Moreover, they will also be forced to sell assets just to bring down the leverage ratio. So this will definitely crash the REIT's share price, which is definitely undesirable for anyone. That's why investing in the correct REIT is so important. If you're interested, you can also watch the first video where I created for the guide to investing for good REITs here. Thank you, and let's continue with the video. So what is leverage ratio? Leverage ratio is essentially the ratio of assets divided by debts. There are a few ways where the ratio can get affected. One, rates simply take on more debts, which will increase the amount of debts. Therefore, bringing up the leverage ratio. Second, during high interest rate environment, property valuations tend to drop. When property valuations drop, the REIT's asset prices drop, therefore causing the ratio to go up. So usually, in high interest rate environment, REITs must be more cautious when it comes to taking debts for their properties in the respective countries. Each countries will have their own individual interest rates. Usually, REITs management will tend to take the respective countries' rates for their respective properties. However, there's also another form of debts that REITs can take which is not accounted in the leverage ratio that you need to account for. That is perpetual security. So what are perpetual securities? They are essentially similar to bonds issued by REITs to investors to raise cash. Based on the REITs reliability and finance ratings, those that are big and stable such as Maple Tree will be able to issue them at a lower rate. For example, Maple Tree Industrial Trust back in 2021 issued perpetual securities at 3.15%, while Maple Tree Logistic Trust issued recently at about 3.65%. However, smaller REITs issuing these perpetual securities will have to offer at a higher rate. One prime example is AA REIT. Back in 2020 and 2021, they had issued perpetual securities giving 5.65% and 5.375% respectively. And this is much higher than their current cost of debt of 4.1%. On top of that, these two years were times when interest rates was much lower. Therefore, there is risk that once these securities have to be renewed, the distributable income will drop because the new perpetual securities that they issue will have to be at a much higher rate. Perpetual securities are very similar to bonds 
where REITs are required to pay the agreed interest until the agreed year. Once expired, REITs are required to pay back the original amount or renew these securities. Some analysts have some concerns on the resets in perpetual securities that the REITs have to renew or pay back. In this high interest rate environment, the main concern is that the new perpetual securities issued will have to be offered at a much higher interest rate, and this will definitely erode REITs' dividends. Let us go on to the next important factor, and that is the interest coverage ratio. ICR's formula is earnings over interest expenses. So what does ICR actually defines for the REIT? ICR essentially measures how easily can the REIT pay the interest of the debts. So if the interest payment of the debt increases, the ICR will definitely drop. In both balance sheet, you'll see that there are adjusted ICR and normal ICR. To me, adjusted interest coverage ratio is always the preferred value to look at. Why? It's because it includes the interest payments to the perpetual securities and the debts. As an investor, it's important to differentiate between these two. That's why you always notice that the adjusted interest coverage ratio is always lower than the normal interest coverage ratio. If there's a huge difference in these two values, this meant that the REITs have issued a lot of perpetual securities. A REIT is as an example with a huge difference. Normal interest coverage ratio looks okay at 4.1 times, but if you include the interest payment to the perpetual securities, the adjusted ICR is at a lows of 2.4 times. Therefore, whenever you invest in any REITs, it's very important to look at their adjusted interest coverage ratio. In order to dive deeper, look into their financial statements or Google search to find out about these perpetual securities that the REITs might have issued. In this kind of environment, big and small REITs plays a part. Big REITs have advantage where they are more established so when they are loaning or issuing perpetual securities, they are able to get them at a much lower interest rate. Let's take a look at two different REITs to do the comparison. We will compare between Maple Tree Logistic Trust and OUE Commercial REIT. Maple Tree Logistic Trust has a bigger sponsor, bigger assets, and better investment grading. Lenders will deem it them as more reliable and less risky. That's why during the recent issue of their perpetual securities, the bond is only charged at 3.65%. Whereas for OUE, they have a sponsor that is not as big as Maple Tree smaller assets and lower investment grading. Lenders deem them as more risky and therefore the average cost of debt is currently at around 4.5%. So this difference in interest rate can play a very significant part as it will determine how much the REIT has to cater their income to pay for these debts. That is why in this high interest rate environment, most of the REITs are getting hit with lower dividends because more of their incomes have to go into paying the interest in either the loans or the perpetual securities. Next, let's talk about debt hedging and debt maturity profile. REITs will always have to hedge a portion of their debts to ensure the predictability of the interest payments. What debt hedging does is to fix a certain amount of the interest payments of the debts. Now, some people may wonder, why not hedge all the loans at the low interest rate? Well, the sharp rise in interest rate was not expected, therefore many REITs did not anticipate this. Moreover, it's never good to hedge 100% of the loans as flexibility is required when managing loans. When it comes to debt hedging, the next related is debt maturity. REITs taking on loans will have to repay back the full amount once it reaches the expiry. However, they can renew their loans if the lenders are willing to continue loaning them. Normally, this kind of communication will take place a few months before the debts actually expire. But with the new renewal, the interest of those debts will be renewed as well, and we will change depending on the interest rate environment. Let's take a look at Fraser Logistic and Commercial Trust as an example. 
They have debts required to be refinanced in the financial year of 24226. With their current cost of debt at only 2.6%, the loan's refinance will definitely be higher because of the properties in the respective countries that they are in. This is very important because this means that as an investor, you have to expect an increase in their finance costs. Therefore, they will have to put more of their incomes to pay down this interest of their debts and might even cause a drop in the dividends to shareholders. I hope this video helps you when it comes to analyzing and investing in the correct good reads. If you like my content, please support the channel by hitting the like, subscribe and comment if you have any questions that you might want to ask with regards to investment. Thank you and I'll see you in the next video.